So today I'll be the coordinator for this session. Sir, we'll begin in few minutes. The participants are connecting in this meeting. Okay. So shall we begin now? It's seven. Yes, if you are ready, then I can start. Okay, fine, sir. Good evening, everyone. So I welcome you in this sixth day of the FDP. Uh, the topic for today's discussion is transforming STEM education, the power of augmented and virtual reality. And the resource person for today is Dr. Kaushal Kumar Bhagat. Let me introduce uh, you all with the resource person. Dr. Kaushal Kumar Bhagat is currently working as an assistant professor in the Advanced Technology Development Center at IIT Kharagpur. He also holds the position of vice chairman of the Center for Teaching, Learning and Virtual Scaling. He received his PhD from National Taiwan Normal University in September 2016. He then served a two-year postdoctoral position at the Smart Learning Institute at Beijing Normal uh, University. In 2015, Dr. Bhagat received NTNU International Outstanding Achievement Award. He was also awarded the 2017 IEEE TCLT Young Researcher Award. In 2020, he received APSC Early Career Researcher Award from Asia Pacific Society for Computers in Education. He was also awarded the 2022 Excellence in Distance Education Award by Commonwealth of Learning, Canada. In 2024, he was honored with the Robert de Fair International Fellowship by the Association of Educational Communication and Technology, USA. He is an associate uh, editor of the British Journal of Te Educational Technology, regional associate editor of the Journal of Learning for Development, and editor-in-chief of Contemporary Education Technology, is also an editorial board member of several reputed international journals. He is a consultant for international organizations like Commonwealth of Learning, UNESCO, etc. His research area of interest includes augmented reality, virtual reality, game-based learning, online learning, and technology-enhanced learning. So, sir, I welcome you uh, in this sixth day of uh, sixth day of this FDP on the behalf of Uttarakhand Open University and NSOU. So without taking much of your time, I request you uh, to uh, guide our participants for this session. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Sumit, for a long introduction. And uh, good evening, all participants. Um, <clears throat> in my talk, first session, I will uh, explain you briefly about uh, two emerging technologies, that is augmented reality and virtual reality. So maybe some of you, you don't have the basic idea. So I will explain you from very basic fundamental things that what are these technologies and how these technologies uh, could be implemented in teaching and learning purpose. And if time permits, then I will also talk about generative AI and how you can use generative AI in your teaching and learning process to design your course, to design your assessment, to design your pitch. Uh, I will try my best uh, to include some of the examples also with the time. Uh, I just want to confirm, Dr. Sumit, is my voice is audible enough? Yes, sir. Okay. So let me just share my screen. <clears throat> voice is audible, sir. Good evening. Okay. Thank you very much for your confirmation. Is my screen is visible? Just a moment, sir. No, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, it is yeah, visible, sir. Visible yes. now. Okay. Thank you very much for your confirmation. So, yes. <clears throat> so, I will start with uh, the idea of uh, these two technologies, how it comes. So, before that, I think we must need to go through the journey that we have traveled. So we started our journey of technology right from very mainframe computer that is in the 1960. 
to right now we have the smartphone technologies and you know we have the um, tablets and other stuffs and if you see even the developing country like india i think uh, almost we are in the second rank or largest you know smartphone users in addition uh, the internet penetration also i am not saying that everywhere it is covered but large number of users second largest number of internet users also in india also you can see that you know the cost of data in india specifically is very low like if you go in other countries maybe you are going to pay uh, like 400 or 500 rupees per month and that too also you will get only 1 gb or 2 gb that is per month but here in case in india you are paying around 850 or 60 rupees and you are getting 3 months data and that is also 1.8 or 2 gb per day so you can see that the data ability is high, the penetration of technology is high. And I will say that before 21st century technology was part of our life. But now we can say that we have become the part of technology, right? Right from the very beginning of your day, you first wake up and you will first see your mobile phone and you will either you will check your WhatsApp or email or any kind of other social network. And then even if you are, when you are going to sleep also, the last thing I think most people we do is that we check our mobile phone, either email or something, other things, and then we go to our sleep. So you, <clears throat> we are so much of, you know, dependent or I can say addicted also to this kind of technology. Now the question arises that how we can channelize this ability of technology in specifically the educational purpose, right? So that is one of the major area and, you know, 10 years back, if we see that, you know, our, um, the revolution was there in 2016 when any when we got 2016 4G technology and then there was a huge revolution. Even the cost of technology before that, the smartphone was so expensive. Now, even the rickshaws wala also uh, can afford the simple smartphone. So, <clears throat> specifically, I'm not saying, uh, saying that this is like applicable in primary education or secondary education, but in higher education, especially, I can say that in every college, and a university and institute, the students, they have at least a smartphone, which is, you know, readily available and where we can apply educational technology. Now, <clears throat> if we are talking about the emerging technologies, specifically in the 21st century, in my opinion, I consider four very important and disruptive kind of technology that we can say that is augmented reality, virtual reality, mixed reality, and 3D printer. Because of the time limitation, we can only focus on augmented reality and virtual reality. <clears throat> now, we all have experienced the COVID-19, right? And we, we found that, you know, the teaching learning process was very uh, non-interactive, I can say. Usually what happens is that we are just turning on our um, online course and hardly the students, they uh, re respond your queries or anything. So... <clears throat> But, you know, these kind of technologies after, you know, introduction of this kind of technologies, even big companies like Alphabet, which is like a parent company of Google, Facebook, HP, STC, they have started investment in these kind of technologies because they have understood that huge potential are there in these technologies, specifically in the education sector. So almost if you see by 2024, like 35, 125 billion investment and 35% growth rate is there. Even if you see the a national education policy 2020 where it is clearly mentioned that application of artificial intelligence application of interactive technologies like augmented reality and virtual reality is one of the mandate in nep 2020 i was also the part of national education technology policy for school education there it is also mentioned these technologies are being discussed and how these kind of technologies can be used even now ncrt they are working on to um, develop interactive contents around 3,000 or 3, more than 3,000 uh, topics they are selecting across the discipline, whether it's uh, uh, social sciences, whether it's sciences or some other, even the language, that how we can convert these kind of uh, topics or concepts into interactive learning and uh, how we can make it some of the experiments more interactive in nature. And they are, they are developing their own augmented reality or virtual reality content. 
So huge potential is there and the companies are also understanding. Therefore, they are investing a lot of money to so that, you know, the R&D is also going on. So like I started my journey in 2013 for this kind of technology when I was doing my PhD in Taiwan. And there itself, uh, there was a company called Oculus and used it used to cost around 6 to 7 lakh rupees. And uh, now you can even get this kind of VR devices into 40,000 or 50,000. And maybe the company Meta is going to enter India. And if we have the manufacturing of this kind of devices in India, then it will also reduce to half because most of the money that we are paying for this kind 40,000, it is basically we are importing. So import tax, custom, all those kind of taxes we are paying. So originally I can say that 20 to 25,000 should be the ideal cost. And even the technology, if you compare the 10 years back, the devices were bulky, heavy, and not very comfortable. But now the devices which we have, the HMD devices, those are very uh, user-friendly, a lot of interaction, even if you have the gesture base, those kind of things are included. So I am just giving a brief idea that why, you know, so many companies are interested because these technologies, the companies and the people, they have understood that these kind of technologies have huge potential. <clears throat> Now, this is basically a kind of spectrum, we can say that in light also you have different type of spectrum for different, you know, so similarly we have, so on one side, on the left hand side, we have the real environment that is we are sitting our surrounding that is we call it as a real environment. And on the extreme right side, we have the virtual environment that means it is totally virtual artificial environment that is being created. Now, augmented reality is basically <laughs> not pure real environment, but also not pure virtual environment. It's a kind of little mixture of um, uh, real environment and virtual environment. In fact, we can say that the percentage of virtuality is less than the percentage of uh, reality. And basically, when we are talking about the virtual reality, it is basically totally disconnected with the real environment. I will explain in my follow-up slides actually what is and what are the basic characters that will give you a pure idea. Now, when we are talking about augmented reality, Basically, augmented reality has three basic characteristics. One, first, it combines with the real world, with a virtual world that is there. Then, whatever the virtual thing that we are looking at in our uh, smart device, any kind of a smart device, whether it's a mobile phone, tablet or anything. So, we can interact with that in the real time. And third, very important thing is that it supports 3D visualization. Now, some of the very important concepts which requires a lot of visualization and spatial orientation for that what we are doing basically we are teaching those concepts on the 2d plane rather than on um, uh, teaching in the 3d way so it re this kind of technology basically help us to visualize the concept i will show you some of the examples which will you which will give you the idea that how this technology can help us <clears throat> now we can classify augmented reality into six basic uh, types, marker-based augmented reality, marker-less augmented reality, location-based superimposition, projection-based, and outlining AR. Now, let us understand each type of augmented reality. Now, with the marker-based augmented reality, it is very clear that we require some kind of QR code or image where we are scanning simply like UPI is basically one kind of marker-based, but that is not augmented reality because there is nothing uh, 3D visualization is coming. So basically, you are scanning. So that is basically image recognition technology is being used. So similarly, here also, we are scanning any kind of QR code or any kind of image when you are using your uh, camera of any kind of smart device and it is going to the uh, server and then it is uh, providing some kind of visualization of 3D visualization on your uh, screen of the mobile phone or tablet. So that is the marker-based augmented reality. From the markerless AR, it is very clear that here you don't need any kind of uh, image or any QR code. Basically, it's basically you are it's it's a ground recognition, and when you are opening your mobile phone camera and scanning in the environment, so it will automatically show you the uh, virtual object or virtual world around you. Now, location-based AR, <clears throat> I don't know whether have you played uh, the game Pokemon. So Pokemon in 2015-16 was very famous game and um, you know uh, across the world even in India also Pokemon so one particular location when you are going and you are opening the AR app of the Pokemon then there will be 3D characters will appear and then you need to catch those characters. Now 
the question arises that how and why on a particular location it is showing you the 3d characters now what is happening when you are opening this application basically you are also sharing your location so on a particular location when you are going so those characters are being you know projected on your screen so that is the basic idea so in location based augmented reality basically it is using your location in if you go in abroad in china or in some other countries in many <clears throat> museums if you are going some point of uh, in at some point of the museum and there is something very important thing and you are opening the application of that museum so then there will be a virtual avatar will come on your screen and that can explain you about that artifact or at uh, that area or something whatever the importance is there it will explain you so how it is happening basically it is using your location and then you are a uh, mobile camera and then there is a visualization is coming so combining all that that is come uh, that is about the location based ar now superimposition ar <laughs> here you can see this basically, basically this is basically the object recognition um, technology that they are using so this is the one part of very old site okay and when you are sorry when you are scanning this so basically because of the object recognition it is visualizing that in the past what would what could be the whole uh, you know this architecture so that's a one kind of visualization that is providing that in the past 50 years 60 years 100 years 200 years what it it was looking like this so basically that is giving you the idea about the old structures you know based on this what is happening so it is rendering is happening and 3d visualization that is being projected there now next is about the projection based ar now here you can see that the the kids they are basically playing with the sand actually it is not sand basically it is small uh, projectors are being uh, attached there and it is projecting different type of sands and then in the real time if you are playing like normal sand if you are playing so you can make the mountains and then you can break it similarly <laughs> sorry similarly this can also you know 3d visualization of the sand and then you can interact with your hand so if you are making it down so it will go down if you are making it up so it will make up so that's a basically idea of the projection based ar now last one is basically the outlining ar so many of us we are driving the car and when you are parking a dark car then you can see that you have a you know rear projection is coming so blue and red and when you are aligning those in the correct way that means it is showing that yes you are uh reversing the car in the right way so that is basically the outlining ar it is showing you one of the very common example daily life example you know we use a lot of filters whether it's instagram or you know the snapchat uh those are basically those filters are basically example of augmented reality we are using this kind of for the last 4 years 5 years but we don't have the idea about that what is this technology but that is basically one type of augmented reality it is projecting the mouse cat all those kind of characters based on your face that is one example of augmented reality even now you can find out that when you are purchasing anything in <clears throat> amazon so basically <clears throat> it can you can see like if you are purchasing a sofa for your sofa uh, for your uh, drawing room so there is an option for ar view so you can click the ar view and then you can project in your room and it will show that how the sofa will look in the drawing room maybe you can change the color and then you can see and basically it is giving with the idea that uh, what type of color what type of design of the sofa will be best uh, for your drawing room so that kind of application even mintra also the dress that you are purchasing there is also example in the lens cart also which type of glass you are wearing so you can you know you can choose the glass and then you can put your face and basically it will project the glass on your face and then you can see that how it looks like it it can vary on the it can customize the based on your uh, face uh, you know size also uh, what type of sunglasses if you are selecting so those kind of things also could be there so it augmented reality nowadays it is being highly used in the in the marketing of uh, products <clears throat> so you can uh, if you have never experience this thing so you can open your amazon app and buy uh, try to buy something or uh, some select some kind of product and then you can also have the experience uh, using your mobile phone also <clears throat> now there are different applications of augmented reality in different fields one is the medical education in medical education usually it is being used to uh, learn about the anatomy or different other concepts of augmented 
human body because human body is one of the complex machine in the earth and then you know it also requires a lot of 3d visualization and uh, this tool or technology i can say that helps a lot for the student to understand different parts of the body visualization of composition of muscles and attachment of the muscles with the bones other different different concepts are there uh, ar is also being used for the entertainment purpose for the social chatting all those kind of things augmented reality is also being used for the military training different type of applications are being in fact in united states um, and also in india nowadays uh, indian military uh, also using this kind of uh, technology for uh, training purpose mm -hmm. now our focus is about the education that how augmented reality could be used in educational sector now one thing is that <clears throat> there are many section of people who are saying that this kind of technology is only applicable for the courses like science and engineering but it is not like that it could be used for the language and reading it could be used for the mathematics and sciences it could be used for social sciences creativity different other kind of you know uh, critical thinking those kind of areas where so we can say that augmented reality is not limited to one particular domain but it can be used across different disciplines and domains of education <clears throat> now i will uh, show you some of the examples <coughs> sorry some of the examples where you know we have developed some of the applications about specifically for the educational purpose so one thing what we develop is basically engineering drawing course one of the ar application so we did a pilot study in iit gharakpur to understand that what type of problems usually they face when they are learning engineering drawing course if you are not familiar or, or if you are not from the engineering background so ed is one of the basic course that every student need to take in the first semester <clears throat> and which requires a lot of 3d visualization so they have uh, different type of problems like auxiliary projection visualization of solid projections then orthographic projections of complex shapes those are different areas where they face a lot of issues now what how this application what we have developed can help the student first very important thing is that it helps the student for 3d visualization second it is also giving you the opportunity for the manipulation of the values like if you are changing the value then how it reacts how the 3d object reacts what will be the changes will be there then it is also helping you know to understand different kind of complex concepts that is there in the engineering drawing course so this is basically one uh, demonstration of the application so here you can see that you know orthographic view is there here you can see that one slider we have provided for zooming if you want to zoom so how you can uh, you can increase the size you can you can have the top view you can have the back view different front view left view <clears throat> this is basically the representation of lines so this requires a lot of 3d visualization normally what happens that we are teaching this kind of course basically drawing these things on the 2d plane but it is actually in the 3d in nature so where students face a lot of difficulty to visualize the thing it is also giving you the opportunity you know 2d representation 3d representation plus it is also giving you the to manipulate uh, the values then how it looks when you are changing like this is a you know horizontal plane length and vertical plane length and then you can change different type of quadrants and then based on that how uh, the uh, the object is uh, you know reacting so that is not possible when you are teaching you know using the textbook or something like that and this is basically a uh, marker based ar so you can see that this ed uh, back side there is a image is there we are scanning that image using our camera uh, mobile uh, camera and then it is showing this thing you can see this one is basically the uh, uh, image code which is being scanned so on different plane how it looks plane you can rotate the plane also you can change the plane length also so that you can do a lot of and then you can visualize that how it changes so <clears throat> here you can see that you can have the x y z you can have different shapes and then you can see also the projections also there is one this is basically the projections based on the planes x y y z z x plane 
you can select different type of three dimensional you can uh, from simple to complex shapes you can add there and then you can identify and see that how the projection looks you can see the projection is happening here <clears throat> so this is one example where we have shown that how augmented reality can help now <clears throat> this is another area where we have explored uh, the application of augmented reality it's basically uh, we call it as a beyond flip classroom now why i am calling it as a, a beyond flip classroom now we all have the idea about the traditional mode of teaching basically what is happening it is basically the sage on the stage right you you are teaching the talk and talk method whatever you are teaching on the board that is thing then we got the concept of flip classroom which was very you know uh, uh, famous and everyone was talking about flip classroom model that this is good but there are different issues or limitations of flip classroom model number one it needs a lot of self regulation from the student side why because let us assume you have in the flip classroom what happens that basically you are recording your video before the classroom and then you are sharing your video with the student and then you are expecting the student will go through the video and then in the classroom you will have some kind of learning activity or you will have some kind of interaction and or assessment or then doubt clearing those kind of things you are expecting that you are going to do in the classroom now what is the guarantee that the student has gone through the video number one problem with the flip classroom number two normally what happens that we record a long video normally 20 minute, 25 minute, 30 minute long video. And there are many research studies. I think one of the studies from Howard um, or Stanford, I'm not able to recall, where it is uh, found that hardly there is two, two to three minutes is the, uh, you can get uh, serious attention of the students about any educational video. So when you are saying that two or three minutes, hardly they are paying the attention, so how can you expect that they are going through the whole 20 minute or 25 minute uh, video? So these are the two major issue with the uh, flip classroom. Another problem with the flip classroom mod model is that it is there is no scope for the interaction. As we have the video, so there is only one type of thing that you are watching the video. But how you are going to interact? So interaction is 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 missing in the flip classroom model specifically when you are sharing your video. So that is the idea what we got that how we can how we can improvise the idea of the flip classroom model. So that we got and we we propose the idea of beyond flip classroom teaching model. Now what is that? The idea is that and there were many propositions and recommendations that how we can integrate some of the interactive technologies in the flip classroom model to make it more interactive. So one example over the past decades, if you, <clears throat> what we did this study, basically we did in Taiwan. So Taiwan is, you are well, uh, you uh, know that, you know, Taiwan is almost 70% of the semiconductors are being manufactured. TSMC, one of the famous company, uh, always in news nowadays because of uh, political and uh, geopolitical thing. And uh, <clears throat> they focus a lot about the material science courses. And then in those courses, these are some of the concepts they the students need to learn. Basically, these are the crystal structures, either simple cubic, border uh, center cubic, face centered, hexagonal, those kind of concepts are there. And over the past decades, how we are teaching, basically either we are drawing those things on the board or we are using this kind of teaching uh, tools or models to uh, make the student understand about this concept. Now, these are the concepts like, you know, on, inside you need to identify number of per, uh, per unit cell or other things. It requires really a lot of 3D visualization. Now, if you are teaching those concepts, 3D concepts on the 2D, it is very difficult for the student to understand those. So what we did, basically, we developed the AR application for these concepts. <clears throat> and you can use your gesture like finger uh, to play with the application, you can rotate, you can zoom in, you can zoom out, you can slice it out. I will show you the video which will give you more detailed analysis. Now you can see here one of the video we have. So this is basically also marker based augmented reality where you are scanning the marker and then this kind of, you know, the structure is showing and then you can play with this structure. You can rotate, you can identify. 
<clears throat> you can zoom in. So basically, it's a kind of body-centered uh, cubic cell is there. And it is giving you the whole idea that how it looks like that. You can slice it out from your fingers. And then you can identify that how many number of you know particles per unit cell. So it is basically showing you the two particles per unit cell. Similarly, there is a, we develop the whole uh, you know uh, there are different structures, and for each structure we develop. structure of BCC also, you can learn about the structure of BCC. So what we did here in our uh, model, we developed this kind of augmented reality based uh, software using the Unity platform and then we shared with the student using the Dropbox. Now, two, three things we did. First thing, because this kind of interactive technology is being provided, now students are very much engaged because they have got the opportunity to play with the learning content. It is not like very monotonous that you are just watching anything. Here you are interacting, you are zooming, you are zooming out, you are rotating to understand the concept. You are also getting opportunity for the tree visualization. Plus, as we have also integrated artificial intelligence, so we can track each student who is watching at what point of uh, time they are watching and uh, where they are spending more time if there is some kind of complexity is there so we will find out that maximum students they are spending more time on that concept so that will also give as a teacher also a feedback that this concept is more complex so we need to simplify that to make it easier for the students so students have gone through that and they set up and then when they are coming to the classroom what we are doing, we are interacting with, we are doing some kind of assessment. So we de also develop one kind of uh, uh, <coughs> clicker. So what is clicker? Clicker basically, I think you have seen Kwan uh, Banega Karodpati where you need to do the audience poll when um, Mr. Amita Bachchan asked for the audience poll, you know, and everyone is A, B, C, D. So that's a kind of clicker. You are, you know, basically answering using the, it's a basically infrared technology that they are using. Now, problem with the clicker is that first, it is very expensive in nature because it needs subscription for each person. I think $10 or $20 you need to pay for the subscription. Second, it has limited functions because there is only option for the multiple choice question, not more than that. So in our, we develop our own CC, uh, our own virtual clicker or we can say that it's a kind of mobile clicker. So we develop an application, web-based application where you can use your mobile phone. It's a free source also. You can type ccr.tw. Basically, it is available now, I think, 14 or 16 international languages, including English, Chinese, French, <coughs> Turkish, Indonesian, those kind of languages we have included, <laughs> Filipino. And you can play around in the classroom using that. You can create your multiple choice question. You can have some kind of open-ended question. You can have some kind of matching questions. Even you can also select randomly one student as a teacher where he will ask the question uh, from his peer group. So there are many functions we have added. Even based on the open-ended answers, uh, the system can also classify or, or group the students into multiple groups. So that function is also included there. So that's a kind of, you know, we can add interaction not only uh, before the classroom, but also during the classroom also. So that's another uh, area that how augmented reality can be used. Now, next, another application we develop called is Archive. So if you are from the chemistry background, so you know that chiral compound, it is one of the another a complex uh, concept where you know you need to visualize the RRS configuration <laughs> and here what we uh, thought that uh, not only the learning should be interactive how about we can create assessment also interactive now again we did some kind of pilot study with the student to understand uh, their problems that they are facing so again one thing is that visualization of three dimensional structure we, the same old traditional way we are teaching, we are teaching those concepts to a 3D concept on a 2D plane like Blackboard. And uh, students, again, they face a lot of issues to understand. 
which is also you know leading to lack of interest and sometimes frustration about that subject not to learn that subject right so <clears throat> what we thought about you know how we can make interactive formative assessment now one thing is that the concept of the formative assessment why we do basically the formative assessment now formative assessment gives us the idea that what type of difficulty the students are facing to understand one concept also it helps as a teacher it is also helping me to readjust my teaching to make it you know to make my uh, teaching more you know uh, such like that it can help the student to understand that concept in the past <coughs> Uh, there are many research studies about the formative assessment and altogether we can say that there are two very important components of formative assessment. That is the informative feedback plus immediate feedback. Now let us assume if you are taking any type of formative assessment and you are giving the result to the student after one month. Normally what happens, the student will forget about what he has written or what she has written or what they have done in the... So, it is very important when you are doing the formative assessment, you must need to provide the feedback informative and immediate. Informative, that means what is the misconception where the student is making error. Those things need to be explained to the student immediately so that they can work on those misconceptions or errors and they can rectify and then in the next time they cannot, they should not make those errors. So there are many past research studies that has been done uh, to understand the you know benefits of formative assessment basically it can help you to identify weakness and deficiencies in your teaching activities that you are following it can also help us to identify learners specific errors or misconceptions then it also helps because when we are uh, understanding the specific error or misconception of the student we are giving the immediate and informative feedback so the students next time they imp they don't commit those mistakes and basically what happens is that it improves learning and ultimately the student is performing better than the last time. Once the student is getting or performing better, obviously the student will get more confidence and more motivation for the learning. So <clears throat> for I can say that or I can you know claim that formative assessment is one of the essential component in teaching learning process. If we are giving the feedback immediately and we can provide the informative feedback. Now, there are many challenges associated with the traditional way of formative assessment. Right. One thing is that if you are going through pain paper, I have in my class, I have 300 students. Okay. It is very difficult for me to give informative feedback if you are if i am going for the traditional way of formative assessment very difficult i cannot give individual attention because of you know the manpower i don't have and because of huge number of the students it is also that you know if i am doing some kind of uh, pain in paper there are chances of more error in scoring or something like that now the question arises that if we are using any kind of technology it can provide me more informative it can increase my efficiency Plus, it will be cost effective. We no need to use those pen and paper that will save my money. And fourth, if we are using technologies like augmented reality or virtual reality, the assessment could also be interactive. The students will also be interested for the assessment purpose. So that gives us the idea that how about we develop one AR-based assessment. So <clears throat> what we did, we used the Unity Game Engine and Euphoria AR Library and Firebase as our database to to create this application. So there are <coughs> two ways or two uh, platforms that, that is there. One is that as a faculty member, you can create, you can customize your own career compound. You can save the answer into the database. And in the second, on the other second, uh, when the student is logging in the system, the chiral compound will be visible and it will be in the three-dimensional way. The student can move around the chiral compound, can see, and then can answer the question. And that will be saved. And immediately, the system will provide, uh, if the student is making any kind of error, the system will provide uh, the feedback to the student that here you have made the mistake. So 
there will be the immediate plus informative feedback will be provided. Now I'm showing you one example. Basically, <clears throat> so this is basically, you can see that here, you no need to scan any image. Basically, it's a markerless augmented reality. You can find out that here, all the elements are being provided, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, chlorine, carbon, and iodine. And on the left side, you can find out that there are three types of bonds, single bond, double bond, and triple bond. Now the teacher can create the organic compound based on the requirement and can assign the number. Now you can see here, <clears throat> you can attach the elements, you can create the compound. Now you can give the name of the compound that you have created. Then R or S configuration, basically what we need to do, if you are from the chemistry background, you know better than me, I am from mathematics background. But basically the idea is that you need to identify the chiral carbon plus then you need to give the preference number. So basically you can have the chiral carbon and then you can select and you can select the atom, uh, you know, for first preference and then you need to give the name also. So you can select and then you can give the name. You can have the all the four. System will ask you and then at the end you can assign whether R or S configure. This is from the teacher side. The teacher has created the compound. The teacher has answered, saved the answer also. If suppose the student is making any mistake in the assigning of the carbon compound, sorry, um, uh, preference number, then the system will automatically identify that where the student is making the mistake and the student will get the feedback. So now you have saved your compound. Now on the second side or the other side, you can see that when the student will log in, basically it will show the compound like this. And then the student can move around the chiral compound because it is helping him or her to visualize. Basically what happens is that it is very difficult to see the other side. Now here, the student can move around the compound and can give the score. And then you can assign whether it's S configuration or, or R configuration. Once you submit your answer, the system will automatically pop up whether your answer is correct or wrong. And then it will also give you, if it is right, then it is fine. You can move to another compound. If it is wrong, then the system will give you the immediate feedback that where you did the mistake about the assigning or you know something else you have made the mistake, the system will auto as the faculty member has already added the answer. So this is another way that not only learning material, but also we can create the assessment as interactive in nature. Another concept what we did is about the code AR. Code AR is basically an augmented reality game to teach programming. So if you have learned, if you have gone through the NEP, so there is another uh, terminology you will find about the computational thinking. Now why we need computational thinking and what is computational thinking? Computational thinking basically involves problem solving. So across the world, it is started actually from Finland and uh, uh, the idea is that many countries like Singapore, Australia, Austria, US, um, uh, China and uh, Finland and uh, different other uh, European countries, Western countries, they have adopted computational thinking in their school curriculum. School curriculum in the sense from grade six, they have started. Now, <clears throat> In NEP 2020 also, we have integrated computational thinking. Now what computational thinking has, you know, basically it's not only pure com computer science, but it's basically how you are solving a problem. When you're talking about the coding, coding is basically a logical thinking. Not it, it is just not like you are writing the code and that's enough. No, for writing, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> for writing a code also, you need a basic logic thinking, logical thinking. 
and that computational thinking basically helps the student to understand. Now, why we need computational thinking? See, we are talking about artificial intelligence. We are talking about machine learning. And today and in future, we are going to face uh, different type of uh, issues, whether it's a food security, whether it's about the cyber security, whether it's um, some other type of issues. And their artificial intelligence and the machine learning is going to play a bigger role. So that's why, you know, we need to, we are talking about the 5 trillion economy. For that, we need to empower our manpower. We need to get the manpower uh, that is requirement of the industry to have the coding experience and to understand artificial intelligence and machine learning. And another thing is that artificial, there is also, you know, there is a misconception of the people that artificial intelligence or machine learning, it is only for people from computer science or you know, the mathematics or science science people. No, it is not like that. Even the people from the social sciences also, they also need AI skill. So I can say that this is, AI is going to be a, one of the fundamental skill that is required across any type of industry. Whether you are going for the finance, there also the big data or data analytics is there. Whether you are going for the social sciences, if you are going for the, you know, architect uh, old architecture or some kind of thing if you are using scanning or image processing those kind of things you require machine learning so everywhere now artificial intelligence and machine learning is going to play a bigger role and for that we need to teach the student right from very beginning we need to create the uh, interest among the student to learn about artificial intelligence and machine learning so for that basically computational thinking has uh, four cornerstones, I can say, decomposition, pattern recognition, abstraction, and algorithm. Decomposition, basic, the idea is that how you are breaking the complex problem into smaller problem, and then you are making it. Then you need to identify some kind of similarities within those problems that you have, you know, got smaller problem. And then there is an abstraction. That means you are removing some kind of irrelevant, <laughs> irrelevant information from that. And finally, you are developing a step by step solution to solve that problem. So these are the four fundamental basic ideas about the computational thinking. Nowadays, you can see that, you know, because of the ability of the smartphones, everyone, even the small kid is handling the smartphone. I remember I got my first smartphone in 2000, I think 13 or 14 when I was doing my PhD in Taiwan. But now I can see that in when a kid is being born, he is born with smartphone. And all the kids, they love to play games. You will not believe that now India is one of the, you know, if gaming, India is India has already crossed China. India is ranked number one in uh, mobile game downloads. Also, number of gamers in India is also rising exponentially. You can find out that now, gaming has a very big market in India. You have must have heard nowadays that our finance minister has also included GST when you are playing any type of game. Why? Because it has a huge market. Because a huge number of people are playing the game. So, that shows that gaming is one of the, you know, one of the things that every kid, adult, they like. So, how we can use gaming to learn about the computational thinking. That was the idea. <clears throat> so what we did, basically, we developed fundamental uh, ideas about uh, some of the concepts in computer sciences using the game. So th in the literature also, there are a lot of research study which has shown that when we are going for the uh, game-based learning, it is providing engagement. It is providing positive learning outcome. Basically, obviously, when you are playing the game, you have a lot of active learning processes going on. When you play, the adrenaline is very high. So, you know, when you get the badges, you when you get the scores, you become very happy and you want to cross the labels, you know. So that is one thing that how we can add the gamification in the education. Now we have a new concept or terminology. We call it as a edutainment. Like there will be the educational plus entertainment. Both can be combined for the benefit of the students and they can learn some of the skills using the gamification. So that was the whole idea. So here basically we <clears throat> two concepts in, in coding, very basic fundamental ideas what we have. We are now increasing these things. But for now we have the for loop and while loop, how the students 
you know play understand about the for loop and while loop so basically these are the qr codes and they need to erase the qr i will show you the demonstration we also use the game learning analytic framework which can track each student when they are playing the game and we can understand that at which level of the game the students are facing any kind of issue because <laughs> every level has some kind of one of the four cornerstones that i have described in the game okay so this is basically you know how many students they have started in let us assume 27 students they played level 1 and at the end only 19 students they qualified and how much time they are taking for each level average time that can also be we can track this is about the overall we can also track individual student also so we can identify that when a student is <coughs> facing any issue which level so we can understand that which type of concept is complex for that particular student right normally what happens that in this type of games we also give lifeline like hint if a student is facing some issue he is or she is not able to cross that level so he or she can ask for the hint so that also <laughs> sorry that also we can track that a particular student how many times he asked for the hint is he repeatedly asking for the hint so those all type of data we can extract and we can give the feedback to the student now this is basically the uh, demo for the game So normally what happens that these are the QR codes. They need to arrange the QR code in a right manner. So there will be some instructions will be provided on your screen. Basically, it's a kind of marker-based augmented reality. And there is a character called Bunny. It's a kind of private. If you are making correct movement, so the Bunny will move. And as a point, the Bunny will get the carrots. And when you cross the label, correctly then the you will get also reinforcement from the system <clears throat> so this kind of reinforcement will be provided this game is free of cost and if you want to use uh, even it is not only for the small kids but also the people from non programming we did one type of study with the non programming students in undergraduate they also played this kind of because this kind of fundamental ideas they need to understand to learn programming and they like this type of game a lot at present we have 12 labels we are now increasing the labels also In 2021, we also won an uh, innovation award in the US for this serious game challenge about this game. <laughs> now, another area where we are exploring is that how this technology could be used in medical education. In medical education, specifically, anatomy is one of the complex subjects that first year students need to learn. And it also requires a lot of 3D visualization. So, I am showing you one very Simple example that how anatomy of arm is important because you can see that these muscles are attached with the bones and when you are <laughs> stretching your arm, how it looks and how it happens, you know, this kind of things requires a lot of visualizations, which is impossible even, you know, you have the dead body with you, but you cannot understand that how the movement is happening in the real time. So you can move around, you can zoom in, you can zoom out those kind of things you can do. <clears throat> so a lot of applications in the augmented reality is there in um, in the very beginning also I mentioned that how it can be applied in the medical education. So this kind of thing could be implemented in medical education. <clears throat> how muscle is attached with the bone, those all information you can have, the biceps, triceps, all those kind of things could be provided in a space. <clears throat> this is another example lab for the lathe machine specifically i am talking about the engineering so many you know engineering college they have the lathe machine but those lathe machines are limited in nature maybe one or two but a lot of students maybe in one group 90 students 100 students are there how they are going to learn about this thing in addition these they never allowed to open this lathe machines 
to understand the different components and the functionality of those components. So now this kind of AR application we can develop and we can implement where the student they do not require any kind of support from the lab assistant. They can simply scan this kind of you know machine on through their mobile phone and then they can understand different components of the uh, lathe machine in. In addition to that, they can there is an integrated video which is also explaining the functions of different parts of the lathe machine. So it is very easier for them. So it's a kind of you know self-directed learning, you can say, where they don't need any kind of support. They can learn by themselves using this kind of application. So it you can, you know, <clears throat> disassemble, you can assemble different parts, you can visualize, you can zoom in, you can zoom out different parts. In addition, you can select the part. And the tutorial video will be sh will be showing to uh, make you understand what type of part, what type of function is there. So this is another area where augmented reality could be applied. Now, I have shown you some of the examples of augmented reality. I have explained you about the augmented reality that has given you a bigger picture. But there are some challenges also associated with the augmented reality. One very big problem associated with this is that you require smartphones which have high processing power. Some of the applications are very big file size. And when you are running this kind of application in your mobile phone, it generates a lot of heat also. So this is one problem. Second problem is that language of human interaction has not been established. Now, by, by this, what, be, what I mean is that <clears throat> what is a good interaction, what is a bad interaction, it is still not, there is no thumb rule, I can say. Because these technologies are very new technologies. A lot of research is happening. So user experience, UI, all those kind of things, how it is helping the student, it is not clear yet. <clears throat> Third thing is that we have a very limited base of people who have expertise to develop such kind of AR application. I cannot s I cannot say that every teacher, school teacher, university teacher, college teacher, they can design augmented reality by themselves. No. So this is the major issue. They are dependent on the ability of the content. And these contents are not free in nature. So that is another issue. So how you can make independent, how you can empower the teachers. So these are some of the very important challenges because these require coding skills, these require 3D modeling skill, which we cannot expect that every teacher will have <clears throat> because it requires time, you require you know the coding background, then only you can design this kind of uh, uh, content. So these are some of the challenges of augmented reality. Now, let us move to next concept that is the virtual reality. Now, 2016 also celebrated as the year of virtual reality in different countries like uh, US or um, um, China, Japan, different Spain, <laughs> they celebrate as the year of virtual reality. I joined IIT Kharagpur in 2018 and hardly people knew, know about um, virtual reality and augmented reality. After five years also, I can say that it is going to finish, like six years we are going to finish. It is still not very much popular among the common people. Although the common people are using, but they are not very familiar that this is virtual reality, this is augmented reality. So lack of people awareness in India is there. Because this penetration of this technology has not happened yet. Because of cost because of you know there are different um, uh, challenges that is there so one thing I can say like this now <clears throat> let us understand what is virtual reality virtual reality we can understand from two perspectives one is technological perspective another one is psychological perspective now from the technological perspective I can say that it's basically a combination of um, audio text video image simulation in a three dimensional environment which is basically an artificial environment it is not a real environment artificial environment from the psychological perspective i can say that it can be considered as sense of being there now what is sense of being there one very simple example i am giving you 
let us assume you have uh, never visited uh, Paris, specifically Eiffel Tower, you have never experienced. Now, if you go to Paris and obviously everyone will go to see the Eiffel Tower. Now, in Eiffel Tower, what happens that you can uh, take the accelerator, you, I think $20 or 20 euro they, uh, you need to pay and then you can take the accelerator in the Eiffel Tower and you can go to the top of the Eiffel Tower from where you can have a very nice view of uh, the whole Paris city. Now, let us assume I am creating an artificial environment of Paris and, and Eiffel Tower. And then you are wearing the HMT device and then you are feeling that you are in the Paris and you are having the experience of Eiffel Tower. When you are pressing the button to go up, you will feel that your bo body is going up. When you are pressing down, you will feel that your body is going down. So that sense of feeling in an artificial environment when I am creating is basically, we can say, sense of being there. If any type, anything is missing, we cannot say that it's a virtual reality. Now, there are different types and characteristics of virtual reality. We can classify virtual reality into three types. Non-immersive virtual reality, semi-immersive virtual reality, and fully immersive virtual reality. Now, what is non-immersive virtual reality? Non-immersive virtual reality, basically, I think you play the PC games. Basically, PC game is also in three-dimensional, right? And you are using, you are giving the command using your keyboard and mouse. Okay. So that's basically a one kind of non-immersive virtual reality where you can see the real world, but you are immersed in that environment. Now, semi-immersive, you will have a huge glass in front of us, in front of you that will block the whole real world. You can see only the glass and what is being projected on the glass. Basically, this is being used for uh, uh, fighter simulation, whatever the pilot is being trained based on uh, semi-immersive uh, virtual reality. You can have a uh, uh, physical cockpit, but in front of you, there is no, uh, that is not a real cockpit. It's a basically a screen is there and then there will be some kind of controllers will be provided and then you will feel that you are a pilot and then there, there will be training on that. Now, fully immersive virtual reality, when you are totally disconnected with the real world, you cannot see anything surrounding you. Okay, whatever I am showing you when you are using the HMD device, head mounted device, whatever I am showing you, you can see only that. And you will feel that you are in the Paris and you are having the Eiffel Tower. So that is basically the fully immersive virtual reality. Now, there are Three characteristics of virtual reality, immersion, interaction, and imagination. Ima immersion in the sense, the sense of being there that I can say. Interaction in the sense when you are, let us assume you are having an escalator and you are interacting with the escalator to go up and down. So that kind of interaction you are doing in the real time in the environment. There is a, something inside, virtual thing is there. Let us assume there is a flower pot is there and you are, you are just throwing something to the flower pot should fall down. So that's a kind of real-time interaction uh, in the artificial environment. That means whatever that is possible in the real environment, that is also possible in the virtual environment. And imagination. So immersion plus interaction is making you, is compelling you, feeling, making you believe that although this is an artificial environment, but <laughs> you will feel that you are that you are the part of that environment. Normally, uh, many cancer patients, they have a lot of pain. So this kind of virtual reality is also being used for the treatment of chronic pain. For some time, like 30 minutes, 40 minutes, this kind of intervention is being given to the cancer patients so that, you know, as I have manipulated their mind, they will not feel that they are in the real environment. Maybe they are in some kind of forest, they are doing something else. And for that period of time, they will have some relief from the chronic pain. So that's one kind of, you know, basically I can say that virtuality is basically manipulating with your mind. Now there are different types of VR headsets, specifically when we are talking about the fully immersive environment. <clears throat> one is the tethered headset. That means these are basically high end. Then we have the standalone, then we have the smartphone. 
So let me explain you. The third headset, basically you are wearing this kind of headset and it is basically there is a cable that is connected with the high end PC. Now the experience is very good, but this and this is these are basically sensors which are tracking your body. Now the experience is very good, but the problem is that it is very expensive in nature. Okay. And also one problem is that it is not very user friendly because this is connected with the cable. So when you are moving your body, so chances are there that, you know, you can fall down with the, with the wire or something is, and this, this is basically a boundary. You cannot do anything out of this boundary. So you are basically bounded. So that is the experience is good, but this is the major issue or limitation I can say. Now, so this is basically standalone VR headset. Now, this is not costly as the previous one, number one. Number two, you can see that there is no cable is required. So you are very, your body is very free. You can move around any place. You can go through around any place and it is cheaper also. But the experience is not as good as the previous one. <clears throat> this is smartphone VR headset. I can say that this one it will cost you around 1.5 lakh or 2 lakh. This one will cost now around 40,000. And next, this one is basically smartphone based VR headset. Normally what happens that uh, you can put your smartphone running your application in this device and you can see around. Now with this smartphone VR headset, what is the problem is that there is no scope for the interaction. You can see here there is controller so you can interact. Here also this is the controller you can interact. But in the smartphone based VR headset, there is no scope for the interaction. Normally, basically it's for the tour. You have some kind of, you know, tourist spot. You are just wearing this uh, smartphone, <laughs> sorry, smartphone based uh, VR headset and you can look around that. So that is the only function. But this is very, you know, low cost, maybe within 1000 or 2000, you can uh, get this kind of uh, VR headset. Now there are different uh, applications of virtual reality in education. Observational learning, operational learning, social learning, scientific research, observational learning, like, you know, some kind of virtual campus. Let us assume IIT Kharagpur, it is one of the largest campus, like 2,100 acre campus is there. So when new students are coming, they sometimes they, you know, they, they used to uh, lost the uh, direction. They don't know where is the, what the academic building or some kind of foodery or something like that. So we can have some kind of virtual campus, which can give them an idea that where the, and, um, their area of interest, what they can see, what they cannot, those kind of things could be there. Then there is an operational learning. <laughs> if you get the opportunity, you can visit the website of NASA and they have a project called Newton World. And they... They have this NASA's space uh, science space project where you can experience the different uh, planets. They, you can observe you and operate the objects using your own hand. You can experience it also. So maybe that is one kind of operational learning example. Then social learning. Social learning, another example where now I think you may have heard about metaverse. So during the COVID time, metaverse was one of the buzzing uh, word uh, and everyone was uh, uh, telling or predicting that everything will be shifted on metaverse. Metaverse it's a kind of platform like let us assume there is a platform for us like all of you are in your home or in office or something place and I'm also sitting in my office. If I will create a space or platform where we will have our own avatars and it is like a seminar room and my avatar will be in the seminar room and you guys are also sitting in the seminar room. So that, that's a kind of thing which we call it as a metaverse. Even I, I think uh, I'm not able to recall the famous singer from US, I think Madonna or I, I don't remember. She's the first singer uh, whose concert was on metaverse. So after that, people were thinking that because the nobody knows that COVID will be over, but everyone was so everyone was thinking that everything will be on the metaverse. So you know that's why the reason that uh, Mark Zuckerberg has changed the name of the company also from Facebook to Meta. So you can see, and they acquired the company Oculus, and they have the new name of the com uh, company that is the MetaQuest. So that is one of the reason. 
because people were very much they were they got the attention of the metaverse uh, uh, the uh, the word so but <clears throat> it didn't happen metaverse was one of the flop and uh, but we never know what will happen in the next 10 years so but still nowadays a lot of concept is going on about the metaverse of the office meetings metaverse of the financial institutions there are a lot of things are going on so even social like we do some kind of video calling so that could be also done on the metaverse many friends they can have they can come to a same uh, same platform and they can have their avatar so it will feel like they are in the coffee house and sitting together and chatting even your gesture how you are moving here like i am moving my hands there so that will also be reflected in the metaverse <laughs> my avatar will also uh, act like that even in medical institutions also many type of uh, therapy <clears throat> that is also uh, pro being proposed to create metaverse of therapy where the doctor will be there that kind of telemedicine practice could be done in the metaverse so that's one kind of uh, area where virtual reality could be implied a lot of research scientific research uh, where specifically for the medical education where you can have the surgical training where you can understand the human body there are different type of applications in medical education in virtual reality you can uh, you can visualize the different anatomy uh, anatomy of different parts of the body you can understand you know the movements all those there are different complex concepts that can be done using the scientific research in industrial training also nowadays uh, virtual reality is being used uh, to train the people uh, to operate some of machines in the military also nowadays in indian uh, army also they are using for counter terrorism or some other type of training programs using the virtual reality because it is saving a lot of money when you are going for the counter terrorism or some kind of other kind of training you need to spend a lot of money for the logistic because you need to bring those soldiers and then you need to create an artificial environment like <clears throat> real based environment there that cost you a lot but here you know you can have this vr devices and in your place you can be you can be trained so that will save the cost of you know travel and logistic other things so that is there i am giving you one example <clears throat> where you know how uh, virtual reality could be used so we have uh, here the terminology that is authentic learning so basically what is authentic learning it is basically bringing the outside concept in the real time in the classroom environment how we can solve the outside problem in the classroom how students can connect what they are learning as a theory or as a practical in the classroom with the outside application so i am just giving one example taipei 101 you may have heard about it a few years back it was second tallest building after burj khalifa but uh, now i think it's a fifth or sixth i don't remember now taiwan is very prone to <clears throat> typhoon and earthquake but taipei 101 it's a 101 you know floors are there but still uh, it is you know uh, you might have heard recently taiwan has a earthquake of 6.9 or something or 7 was there but there was no effect on that building so the architecture and the engineering is marvelous so basically if you're from the engineering background so all the tall buildings they are basically using the tune mass dampers they are also no these are also known as, as a harmonic absorber or seismic dampers so these are basically a mechanical devices to stop or to absorb this and these are very economical and effective also compared to you know overall structure properties of the building so taipei 101 it looks if you see the taipei 101 it looks like a bamboo if you get the opportunity so you can uh, search in youtube and then you can understand so basically <laughs> they have this kind of pendulum tune mass temper right so our idea is that normally what happens that when we are teaching this kind of concept in the classroom normally we are writing the equation and then just saying that if you change this variable so this will happen now how i can bring the authentic learning experience i cannot take all my students to go taiwan and have the experience of taiwan taipei 101 and to get to understand the pendulum tmd but virtual reality is giving me the opportunity to create an artificial environment of tmd to create an artificial environment of taipei 101 to create a scenario of typhoon or earthquake so let us assume that the student has learned about the concept of the pendulum tmd and then 
what I am giving them, I am giving some kind of parameters like mass, length, steepness of the structure. And then I am giving a control panel to the student and saying that you are in the building of Taipei 101. I have created a virtual environment and then there is a typhoon is coming or earthquake is coming. Now the game is that you need to change the variables as per the equation and you need to make sure that you have selected the values correctly. If you are making any mistake, the building will fall. So this type of gamification is there, this type of virtual experience is there and then whatever they have learned, they need, right now they need to apply. So this is basically we have the wind blowing for typhoons and then hand motion for the earthquakes that can generate this kind of thing. So this is basically So now they are inside the building and then this kind of control panel is being provided with different parameters and then we are creating, sorry. And then we are creating the situation of typhoon or earthquake. This is basically the typhoon. In typhoon, high speed wind with rain will come. And then they need to control the parameters so that the building will remain as it is. If they are making any kind of mistake, so the building will fall. So this is one example that is showing that how you can you know create authentic learning experience in the classroom. Now, many people they ask me the question that you know. Which one is better, augmented reality or virtual reality? See, it depends on your affordability. And there are some issues also that we need to consider. For me, as a developing country, India, we must need to first go for the augmented reality because the penetration of technology like smartphone, the ability of smartphone is very high, specifically in the higher education when we, when we are saying every student, they have the smartphone. So <clears throat> one thing that, second thing is that, with the VR, the problem is that you are using the controller. So actual sense or feel is missing there. When you are using the augmented reality, you are using the finger gesture. You are touching. So you are feeling. So that is multimedia and multisensory display is there in augmented reality. But that is not available in the virtual reality. Second thing is that as for augmented reality, we require just smartphone. So this is portable in nature. This is also cost effective in nature. But for virtual reality, you need, if you are going for the tethered headset, you need to create the whole setup. You need the high-end PC, you need the that VR devices. So that will cost you one high-end PC will cost you around 2.5 lakh to 3 lakh rupees plus this kind of device, 2 lakh. So around 5 to 6 lakh rupees you need to spend on one setup. <clears throat> but however, for the AR, you just need one you know, mobile phone. Nowadays, you can get it within 15,000, 16,000. You can get a good smartphone. Third thing is that when you are wearing the head mounted device for virtual reality, many people they have sense of nausea or motion sickness issues. Not all people are comfortable with this device. And a lot of research studies are also going on how to minimize that kind of uh, motion sickness issue. But with the augmented reality, it is more user friendly as compared to the virtual reality. So these are, there are some kind of advantages of augmented reality over virtual reality at present. I don't know what will happen. There are a lot of research studies are going on, whether it's about the cost or, you know, this kind of experience, maybe in the next five years or 10 years, it may reduce and it, it may give a tough challenge to augmented reality because virtual reality is more immersive than compared to the augmented reality. Now, future challenges, there are different challenges associated with augmented reality and virtual reality. I have shown you some of the examples where how augmented reality or virtual reality could be employed. We have done a lot of empirical studies also related with the application of uh, augmented reality and virtual reality and most of the cases we find and that these are very effective in nature. That is fine. But 
still there are many challenges also associated with these technologies. So I can classify these technologies, the challenge of this into three parts, learning, experience, and technology. Now, we need to understand that what type of content and what type of learning style is suitable for this kind of technology. Now, one problem at present, what I'm finding that, you know, in the name of technology, we are using technology everywhere where it is not necessary there also I am using the technology. So as I mentioned that augmented reality and virtual reality is applicable only those cases where it really requires a lot of 3D visualization. Where we can do the things in a simpler manner then why we need to use this kind of complex technology. Number one. So we must need to clarify ourselves and we must need to understand that where this kind of technology is actually applicable. So for that, we must need to understand the characteristics of these technologies. Based on that, we can go for that. And there is one saying that, you know, um, I was in China and also in Taiwan. So there people used to uh, use a chopstick to eat. So I was just, I just asked my friend that, you know, why you use fork, why don't you use fork or spoon to eat? Why you use uh, chopstick? So my friend replied that, you know, the chopstick can reach that place also where your where your fork and spoon can't reach. So same thing is applicable with the technology. The things which are very complicated, we must need to use the technology to make it simpler. But things which are very simpler, we should not make it complex. So that is one thing. Another thing is the cognitive overload. I hope you have the idea about the cognitive load. So basically what happens that when you are using too much uh, multimedia content, so our brain has limited working memory. So it will not be able to process the information. If we are not able to process the information, it will not be stored in our long-term memory. So that means we will forget the things, the retention rate will be very you know, low. So we must need to make sure when we are using this kind of technology, we need to reduce also cognitive load. Third thing, we also need to measure the effects of, you know, this kind of technology on learning or motivation or some of the other uh, perspectives. You know, let us assume I am thinking or I am uh, I am guessing or I am I am proposing that this kind of technology is will be very effective, and you are using that technology in your teaching uh, some of the concept, but maybe it is not suitable. So you need to do some kind of studies also whether these kind of technologies are really helping your student to learn those concepts or not. Now about the experience, one very important thing is that unfriendly interaction. As I mentioned that many times there will be latency will be there when you're giving the uh, command in the real time that will not happen. So because these technologies are in very early stage or I can say in the baby stage, these are not very mature technologies. So that could be one problem. Second thing is that data privacy and data security. So whenever we are logging, we are sharing a lot of data, right? We are sharing our data, our bodies tracking where we are sharing we share our strategies when we are playing some kind of game. So we need to be very, very careful what type of data we are sharing with the uh, companies when we are using this kind of applications. So even the companies should have the responsible gaming or responsibility and accountability that they should not share our data with the third party or they should declare in their terms and conditions that what type of data they are taking from you, you must, the user must have the awareness that what type of data they are sharing with the companies and whether it is also going to a third party because you must have heard uh, one of the issues that Facebook sold some of the data to another third party, right? So that was many cases you can find out. And, uh, it is very common that, you know, when we are uh, installing any kind of application, we hardly uh, read the terms and conditions. We never read the terms and conditions. By that, we share a lot of data that we are not aware of. You might have seen that many times you will find one example is that if you are searching something on your Amazon and you are opening some other type of application, you will find that those suggestions of Amazon will be visible there. So that means your data is already sold. You may hear something you are discussing with your friends, some purchase or some, you know, you are planning to buy a refrigerator, AC or something like that. 
So as you are giving access to your microphone uh, of your mobile phone, so many applications also hear what you're talking. And that is being also shared with uh, different uh, other third parties. And then you will find out many times that uh, whatever you are planning, you have never shared with, uh, you know, or you have never searched, but the recommendations or suggestions are coming immediately when you are going to that platform. I am not creating a scary environment for you guys, but I'm telling you what is happening. So you need to be very, very careful that what type of permissions you are giving to the applications that you have installed in your mobile phone or any type of other things. So data privacy, data security it is another uh, big challenge uh, at present. Now, device cost and portability. I can say that as many as companies will come, so the device cost will definitely reduce. I'm giving one example, like in 2013, there were only two companies in the world. One is STC and another one is Oculus. And there was monopoly of these companies and whatever they are charging, that is, you know, very, uh, we cannot say anything. But now you have the Samsung, you have the HP, you have the STC, you have the Meta, and um, you have the uh, Microsoft, you have the, now Apple has also launched Vision Pro, you have the Lenovo, and I am not considering Chinese companies. Chinese companies, if you just search, there will be 100, 200 Chinese companies are already there, which are just waiting to access the market of India. So although I am discarding the Chinese companies, still we have eight to nine companies. So a lot of competition are going on, is going on. And you, I have shown you that, you know, even the Google and uh, Alphabet and uh, some other companies are investing a lot of money because they have understood the potential of, and just like, you know, uh, we have refrigerator, air conditioned, uh, smart uh, TV in our home. Very soon, in the next five years, I am uh, I am sure that virtual reality device will also be one part of our you know our, our home in the next four five years because the device twenty thousand twenty five thousand you can easily afford. <clears throat> next is the st environmental st stimulation that. Uh, what type of classroom is there, whether this type of uh, uh, device or environment will be suitable for your kids or not, that you need to think. And uh, integration of technology in environment is very important. Uh, one of the important factors is that professional development of teachers. First, we need to empower our teachers to use this kind of technology because at the end, as a technologist, I can develop the technology, I can develop the environment, but who are actually going to implement they are the teachers. Until unless we are empowering the teacher, it is very difficult to, you know, in, uh, to get the, you know, integration of these kind of technologies in the classroom, in the university, in the colleges. So first, the teachers need to understand these kind of technologies, how to use. They need to understand that what type of content they need to use, and then better professional development programs we need to have to train the teachers about uh, the implementation of technology, then only the penetration of these technologies could be possible. So that's all for this. If you have any questions, then I can take your questions now. Thank you very much, sir. I request the participants, if they have any query, they can discuss uh, that with us. Sir, good evening, sir. Yes, good evening. Yes, please go ahead. I don't have any question, but a wonderful presentation. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you. Any another participant would like to add on to something? Good evening, sir. Uh, I agree. Uh, really, this is very good presentation. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yes, any other person? Sir, I would like to ask you something. Yes. Uh, so the topic that you have discussed mostly are related to engineering or science background. How yeah. can we implement this uh, concept in uh, science and so uh, social sciences? and Social humanity? sciences, one example I can give <clears throat> is about the history, right? You know, so you can have the VR simulation of those history, historical journey. So there are nowadays, there are also uh, historical museums are available on the VR. So students, you know, if, if a teacher 
I have no, I have, because of the time short, time is short. Otherwise, I could have discussed about one new concept that is coming about the 360 virtual reality. And we have also developed one platform called 360 VR Educator, where you no need to do any kind of coding. Simply, you need to just upload your 360 image or 360 video, and you can create your own interactive content. So we have developed, it's a beta version. We are now improving. We have done some kind of training workshop also uh, for some uh, teachers. So we have got some feedback. So we are revising based on the feedback. So maybe some other time, if I get the opportunity, then I will discuss that how we can use this kind of thing. One more question, sir. Sir, I am a person from sir, I, uh, background. Yes, go which, ahead. Which background? Hello, Munaba. You are having any question? Hello. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think you can raise your hand. Then it will be easier for us uh, to be easier for us. I'm from Hello. management background, sir. I am from management background. Okay. So, could you suggest me some tools and techniques for using this AI, AR? Or... <laughs> so, I think in management, a lot of hospitality management, okay, nowadays that is being trained using the virtual reality. So, there could be their soft skills, there could be used for the virtual reality, where you can have an avatar. Many people, they have afraid of, you know, uh, for public speaking. So, basically, they, they train mm -hmm. themselves using the avatar. They can interact in the because nowadays we have the generative AI large language model. So what you are saying based on that, the the other, you know, the chatbot you can integrate where you can have the interaction and then you can find out the confidence. So those kind of soft skills, management, hospitality management, that can be there. Thank you, sir. Any other uh, participant? Uh, yeah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I want uh, some geographical examples for this session. Because I am from geography, geography background. <clears throat> That's why I want some geographical example. If you uh, explain me. See, what we have, again, I am telling you. See, I have explained the technology and I have explained the characteristic of the technology. Okay. As a subject domain expert, you need to think that these are the basic characteristics. So you need to think whether in geography is there any area where 3d visualization is required now one example data visualization in geography that requires yeah. a lot of 3d visualization there you can apply the virtuality okay. so as a subject mm -hmm. domain domain expert you also need to okay. think in that direction that how you can use this technology as technologies we can develop yeah thank you Sir, I have a question. I have one question, sir. Yes. Please go ahead. Please go ahead. Yeah, like what are the software programs? It is it is um, helps to do 3D diagram <clears throat> or either, for example, I know some little either C, C, Java like that. So okay. If we I'm, learn I'm, that. I understand. So basically, for 3D modeling, there is an open source platform called Blender. So you can learn Blender to develop the 3D models because whenever you are creating an environment, 3D assets are required, which we import. And then we have basically two platforms. Either you can use Unreal Engine or you can use Unity. Unity platform for Unity platform, you need to learn C sharp language. Okay. And uh, I think for Unreal, it is C plus language. You can apply. And when you are importing this 3D asset in those platform, then you can create the simulations. So any platform you can choose as per your uh, expertise or maybe your interest. Okay, okay, sir. Even Python coding like that. Yes, these are the platforms. For those platforms, you need to write the scripts. And for different platforms have different type of requirements. Python is not there. C plus or C sharp language. These are the two languages. If you are going for Unity, you need to learn C sharp. If you are going for Unreal Engine, then you need to learn C+. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Thank you very much, sir. Any another participant would like to seek any clarification, any example? Good evening, uh, sir. sir. Yes, sir. Please go ahead. Pooja, um, sir. 
Uh, myself, Dr. S. N. Oja from UAU University. So my question is the role of AI in basic sciences. Yes. Because my I am a student of botany. Uh, role of AI in bioinformatics is very good and biochemistry, biotechnology also. But in basic science, how the student is through AI, virtual lab, through basic sciences only. You are talking about virtual reality or you are talking about artificial intelligence? Because these are two different concepts. The role, role of AI in basic sciences. Role of artificial intelligence yeah, you are talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you can have, see, for teaching learning, it's you can create AI tutor. Okay. Or AI chatbot. Now, in large language model, generative AI like ChatGPT or Copilot, you can create your own chatbot. So the student, they can ask the question, different queries, uh, different clarification. You can also use, uh, specifically, I'm talking about uh, not only about the research part, because for this, then for research part, I don't have much idea about the chemistry. Like in organic compound, you can have the crystalline structure. You can classify a lot of AI is being used uh, based on the image processing or object recognition. That is the another part. But for teaching learning purpose, you can, gen you can design your course you can design your assessment and uh, you can design your quiz. You can have your own AI tutor for the students where they can ask the question and the tutor we can provide support or personalized learning based on the answer of the student. It can also classify what type of content will be suitable for the student. So those kind of applications could be there. It's a generic, but it can be applied in basic sciences or engineering or social sciences. But I'm only focused on the experimental work. So see, again, for <laughs> experimental thing is that base, I don't have background in computer science. I have, sorry, yeah, okay. uh, chemistry, so, but I have given you an example that, you know, yeah. where you can have the image recognition, you can have the different crystal structure, identification of the crystal structure, even a lot of large data set are is there where you can uh, use analytics to identify some of the features of the compound. So those kind of uh, AI application could be there. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Any further query? There's no query, but uh, I would just like to uh, thank uh, Dr. Bhagat. Uh, this is uh, Professor Ritu Mathur Mitra. And uh, I, I found your presentation very futuristic, if I may say so. And I think that is a wonderful way of also ending our FDP sessions. Uh, we will definitely contact you again, uh, you know, if you can uh, give, a, 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 you know, guide us about social sciences, because these are uh, feedback which we are getting from the participants already. Uh, so that would be great if you could join us again. Uh, so okay. thank you once again. And over to Dr. Shumi. Thank you very much, ma'am. So with this, we came to the conclusion of this session. Uh, now I would like to present formal vote of thanks uh, to Dr. Kaushal Kumar Bhagat for this wonderful presentation. In this presentation, he has introduced us the concept of augmented reality and virtual reality, importance of futuristic approach, integrating artificial intelligence, uh, virtual reality, augmented reality in our teaching and learning approach so that we can increase the participation of learners or students in our classroom teaching or beyond classroom teaching, even in flipped classroom teaching also. So thank you very much, sir. You have enlightened all of us because most of us are from open and distance learning system. And we believe on, in all these technology. So thank you very much again from Uttarakhand Open University and NSOE. Thank you very much, sir. And all okay. Thank you. Thank you very much for the invitation. Namaskar. Thank you, sir. Okay.